Hello and welcome to Business on the Wire. The Finance Minister has announced a relief packet, something that people were expecting and hoping to see very, very quickly indeed. And I just want to walk you through some of the details of it. Uh, a quick word first on the size of the package that's been announced. It's about 1,70,000 crores. To put that figure into perspective, it stands at less than 1%, to be specific, 0.8% of our GDP. One way of looking at this is that the government is sort of, you know, measuring its bullets and, and putting it out in a piecemeal fashion. But one does have to question the size of the package, considering what the global parallels are in countries like the US, for example, and even in Canada. These governments have spent close to 5% of their GDP putting all their resources into this relief package. I think the important thing for the government to understand right now, the Indian government, is that this is not a relief package we're talking about. It is a survival package. This is a body blow to our economy and the very running of the entire machine. And we are not alone in that. So there's no shame in admitting the fact that this is a seminal moment, something we haven't seen in decades or centuries, really. And that's when the government needs to pull out all the stops and go all out. In fact, even staunch supporters of the government did indicate in many you know, press interactions that at least 3% of GDP was a figure that needed to be earmarked to pump the, the economy back into some state of revival post this entire COVID episode. In any case, we've been struggling with seven quarters of a recession-like setup. This is probably a package that should have come pre-COVID and then came the real support. So uh, I am disappointed with the size of the package that is announced. I'm hoping that over the next few days, we're going to hear more frequently from the finance minister and maybe even the prime minister in terms of details that are uh, that are addressing the pain and plight of several sectors. Uh, they have focused on some pain points, which is really the lowest strata. Uh, and I think that's important. It was important to get that building block in place before doing anything else. I'm sensing there might also be a joint presser at some point over the next few days with the RBI, where issues such as EMI payments, working capital loans, etc., that kind of thing might get addressed. My question, though, is what happens about the 8 crore unorganized businesses and the 10 crore affected workers who do need, according to most estimates, the support of close to 1 lakh crores? I don't think that got covered in many of the various schemes that were discussed. I am very glad, though, that they have not uh, decided to you know reroute funds into a new scheme and they are using existing schemes but i think the number has fallen short of expectations on most counts the positives first the uh, one part of this relief package will include food distribution which is the pm garib kalyan anna yojana it aims to target about 80 crore people remember there's already 50 kgs of rice that goes out per person uh, free under this scheme so that gets doubled and now becomes 5 plus 5 10 Per, per, per person and one kg of pulse per family that's for the next three months so I think food distribution was important and essential I'm glad that came through the other positive was the fact that a health insurance scheme was announced particularly and specifically for health workers I think it's been quite appalling the kind of response that we have seen in some parts of the country to people who are organized either in the health and health and ancillary services or even in the aviation services and I'm glad that the government stepped up and put some kind of support mechanism in place for them so there is a three-month insurance cover of 50 lakh per person and that covers all health uh, workers I think the estimate that the finance minister put out was that this should target about 20 lakh people uh, the Ujula scheme, I think there's still some clarity required on what exactly was implied when they said free cylinders for three months. Are additional cylinders being given out or are refills being promised? Either way, this is a good move because the biggest point of criticism or the biggest point of concern over the last few months was that many of the, these families that actually got um, you know, a cylinder thanks to the Ujula scheme really could not afford refills because of the rising price of LPG. So if they are getting that in whatever form or fashion, that is a good thing and that is a positive as well. The negatives, things that I um, had a question mark with. The first one was regarding the PM Kisan scheme through which some money is going to be, you know, paid out to the farmers. Uh, the finance minister said that there's 6,000 rupees annually which goes out to farmers that will be given as front-loaded 2,000 rupees immediately for the April-June quarter. 
Uh, now, the first installment of the 2000 rupees of the PM Kisan scheme was in any case due in April. So I don't think that there's any fresh measure or fresh, uh, you know, deal that has been put out to deal with or to look at this extraordinary crisis that farmers are going to face. Uh, there was no immediate support for many of them who need to be um, reaping their crop at this point. I did not hear any details on that. There were again no details on what happens to tenant farmers who also deserve Deserve to get the same economic relief but don't fall under this PM Kisan scheme. My other problem with the PM Kisan scheme is that I don't think the government had quite got uh, got the catchment area that it was looking at anyway. Our own research suggests that till um, till the few months that it has been running, I think 75,000 crores had been allocated. Only about 50,000 crores has actually been remitted out into the farmers' accounts. So uh, on this one, I'm wondering what incremental measure has actually been given to the farmers because this is something that was due to them in any case. The second one, MG Narega, on which the finance minister said that she hopes to benefit five crore families. The wage rate has been increased by a little bit and it basically implies uh, 2000 rupees per worker in terms of an increase. Now, do remember at this point, because of the COVID pandemic, 90% of all Narega sites have been shut as they will have to in order to prevent the risk of social transmission or community transmission. So most of these schemes, most of these projects are not running at this point um, a hike in terms of the narega rate again was due in any case and over the last couple of years that that uh, hike or that rate of hike has actually been quite small so i think this again is a measure that i'm not sure is going to reach the intended parties because many of these projects stand at a standstill right now uh, on some issues, I think more detail is required. For example, on the EPFO, the finance minister said the government will pay the EPF contribution of both the employer and the employee that dots up to 24% for the next three months for all establishments with up to 100 employees who earn less than 15,000 rupees per month. Would have wanted to hear more details on, on what this covers in terms of per, uh, percentage of the SMEs and uh, whether this is enough support or not for the SMEs to prevent layoffs, I think is uh, something only time will tell. There were some changes on the PF scheme regulation. There will be an amendment over there, she mentioned. It will allow for non-refundable advance of 75% of the amount standing to the credit of a member. The finance minister also alluded to a welfare fund for construction workers and she said that they have directed the state government to use funds to assist the workers. Um, this construction uh, fund, this welfare fund is actually a fairly large sized corpus but I think there are some question marks on the number that was alluded to in terms of 3.5 crore workers. These numbers have actually been slipping off quite a bit over the last year or so. So I think more detail is, uh, is required both on whether or not we do have those 3.5 crore workers registered as was claimed uh, in the press conference. And secondly, what this covers in terms of a total percentage of the un unorganized labor, particularly in construction, we, we don't have, um, I think, clarity on how many people actually are registered under this scheme. Um, you know, net net, I think people were basically waiting to see something far more, uh, far more strong and aggressive in terms of a move. I don't know if moving in this tentative fashion is the preferred style, but I don't think the time for being tentative is now. The size certainly needs to scale up big time. It would be great if that happens over the next couple of days where, you know, layer upon layer is added to what we feel is not a revival package, but a survival package. It really is that imperative at this point. And the other point of concern for me is that I think I would have seen, wanted to see much more in terms of a direct cash dole out. I think that is really what people need right now. Um, you know, survival is key. Um, there are very, very real fears in terms of their existence for food, for for supplies. And I think that needs to be addressed. Um, it's a wait and watch approach, frankly. I, you know, I'm, I'm quite uh, concerned about the next few days, but I'm hoping that that comes through. She did mention that they've reacted 36 hours after the lockdown. I didn't know that the lockdown was the point from where we started treating this like a crisis. But if we have, then let's hope the next few days and hours bring a lot more from the finance ministry because it is sorely needed.